Water quality needs to be considered in application. It's having a major impact on the efficacy of chemistry. Let's just take some of the aspects of water quality into consideration. pH, bicarbonates, and the presence of calcium or magnesium carbonate or hardness in the water. Hard water will have an impact on surfactant loading. The old timers would say, if you can't lather soap, the water's too hard for um, spraying with. So you think about that. If you've got hard water, that's making your surfactant package work harder and probably leaving a bit of an opening for harder to wet plants for getting chemistry in. Bicarbonates is a bigger issue in north of Dubbo than what it is south of Dubbo. Now, bicarbonates are going to have an impact on amine chemistries and dim chemistries in, the, in what was the group A or now group 1 chemistries. If we consider bicarbonates and we take the Macquarie Valley SOS data, 88% of the water that they screened for spray application was unsuitable for 240 amy and also for some of the Group A chemistries. That's a big hole in our application program. So if we look at the table that's on the board, it's a water quality table that's uh, in the New South Wales DPI um, winter spraying guide. And if we consider hard and alkaline water and look down there, the amount of not recommended or issues with application are quite significant. It punches a big hole in our spray program. So we need to know water quality. If we consider pH as an issue, uh, organophosphate insecticides do not like elevated pH. In the old dimetho eight days, at a pH of nine, you had 45 minutes of half-life. So let's go back one step from that. If you've got bore water coming out at eight, eight, two, eight, three, or four, and you're using a phenytrothine and organophosphate in your grain protection, you possibly haven't got four hours to get that out. So using rainwater in that situation is probably going to give you a bigger impact on the efficacy of that application. In a previous video, we spoke about mixing order and we said 75% oh, is a good number to enable the spray mix to be closer to the final end point. If we put the acidifiers in at 50% and then throw a group B chemistry in such as tackle off this list, it does not prefer an acid environment. So by holding that back a little bit in that mixing order, you've got that water buffering back out. Now, not all water is going to buffer back. Rainwater, if you acidify, it's very hard to increase the pH again when you bring that up to top tank level. So it probably raises the question of can we overdo acidification at times? Whereas with bore water, when you're adding the extra bit to the tank, the pH is generally pushing back towards a more alkaline range. Now let's consider a couple of water tests. Here in front of you, you have a typical northern water test. Its pH is quite up, it's 8.7. It's bicarbonates of plus 700. And if you have a look at the hardness, it's not hard. It's only 20 parts per million calcium carbonate. So this water's going to have an impact on some, some of the old organophosphate uh, insecticides. It's certainly going to have an impact on uh, group I or the now group four hormone chemistries. And that's probably raising a bit of a question in my mind. Is, is this why we're seeing such an increase in milk thistle? We've got a hard to wet plant being sprayed with water that is having an impact on that chemistry. And it's creating an issue for glyphosate that it has to do a larger part of the lift to try and kill that chemistry. So when you're presented with water like this, this is a real challenge for your camera sprayer. Time in tank is gonna have a further degradation on chemistry. If we take bicarbonates in isolation, once you get above 150 parts per million bicarbonate, you are at an impact on your group A and your um, group I chemistries. So your group I now four, group A one is in the new grouping. This next water test is an interesting one. This is a, this is a southern, but it's a hard water test. Look at the calcium carbonate. It's up around 1400. Now water's classified as hard when you get between 250 and 300 parts per million. And this has an impact on glyphosate. 
Glyphosate needs to maintain a negative charge to be taken into the plant. If we don't arrest the calcium and magnesium carbonate in these waters, we basically bind those onto the glyphosate ion. Now, the problem is, this is where we would use ammonium sulfate for glyphosate. If presented with hard water like this and you're wishing to put a dicamba formulation in with it, you would be better to source another water sample to take away the reliance on the ammonium sulfate. Ammonium sulfate added for the hardness here and also the bicarbonates in this water doesn't necessarily improve for an amine formulation. This third water test is a bad southern water test. And if you were presented with water of this characterization, you'd be looking for an alternate supply. The hardness and the bicarbonates are both plus 1,000 in parts per million, putting them way out of spec for a lot of chemistry. And I really question the development of some of our resistance over time where water like this is being used, that it's leading to a sublethal dose of application. So chemistries are having to work harder. And so we're selecting for the plants that are surviving the sublethal dose. This experiment that we, I, I played around with to have a look at what is the impact of acidifying rainwater as against acidifying bore water, and then looking at what happens at 50% to the final tank volume. Keeping in mind that with mixing order, chemistry is going in anywhere from 50% onwards of tank volume. The risks of doing it here can probably um, can be drawn out. Glyphosate can handle the pH to be a bit lower than what say um, a group I or group four ke chemistry can be. Now, in this picture, rainwater dropped to three and a half pH at 50% of the tank volume. Because the rainwater doesn't have much hardness or bicarbonate or so forth in it, it never climbed back above that three and a half. So that means now our hormone chemistries would be sitting at a low pH. Also, our group B chemistries or our group two chemistries would be sitting at the same point. With the bore water at 50%, we did drop the pH. But by the time we brought that tank volume up to 100%, the pH settled out back around 6 or 5.8. So 75%, I'm very confident, is a number that we should have embedded in the back of our minds to help protect the chemistry.